Well, hi guys, it's Alyssa, and I am here with another reading for you all today. I hope you've been doing well. So for today's pick a card, I wanted to look into the current energy between you and your person of interest. And this can be for, you know, regardless of what's going on between the two of you right now, whether you're in separation or just casually like talking, or if you're even um, in a relationship with this person, we're just going to look at the energy between you, um, you know, some of their thoughts, their feelings, if maybe future energies as well, just whatever comes up, okay? So, um, I've got three decks of cards for you guys to choose from. For deck number one, we have the Modern Witch Tarot, and with that, I have this Amethyst. Deck number two is the Tarot of Sexual Magic with the Clear Quartz. And then deck number three is the Wild Unknown Tarot with Opalite. So I'll give you guys a minute to make your choices. As usual, all of my links will be in the description below. I do offer personal readings. If that's something that you might be interested in, you can go to my Etsy store, which is going to be linked down there and find all the information you need to know about how that works. Um, but yeah, take your time. Breathe, meditate on your person if you need to, and um, if you still haven't made your choice yet, you can go ahead and pause the video because we are going to get started with group number one. So for those of you who chose deck one, the Modern Witch Tarot with the Amethyst, let's find out what the current energy is between you and your person of interest. So the very first card that we have coming up here is the Six of Cups, Three of Pentacles, Five of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, <clears throat> we've got the Emperor, the Ace of Wands, Three of Wands, the Star, and the Eight of Swords. Okay. Um, on the bottom of the deck here, we've got the Five of Swords. I will put that off to the side here. And I want to grab an oracle card from the Whispers of Love oracle, and then we will talk about what's going on here. <clears throat> Whoa. That's way too many cards. What's going on between group one and their person of interest? Okay. Finally, all right. Interesting. The Oracle card here is new love and it says embrace an opportunity for love in your work prospects for or for spiritual growth. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, let me stick that right there. Okay. <clears throat> so, um group number 1. What's going on between you and your person of interest? I want to just start by going through uh, these cards. So first of all, we've got the Six of Cups. 
The Six of Cups is very much associated with memories, nostalgia, the past. This is a very gentle, very loving kind of energy. It can represent childhood um, or youthfulness in some cases. It is also considered to be one of the soulmate cards because it can signify like past life connections or past life relationships in some cases. Um, the Three of Pentacles. This card relates a lot to teamwork and cooperation. In most cases, it represents like people coming together and working together in order to build something up um, or establish something or 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 create some sort of foundation or or what's the word I'm looking for to, to create some kind of stability. OK, uh, the five of cups. This card is a very heavy sort of energy. Um, it talks to me about sadness, grief, loss. It can also signify a pessimistic attitude, like somebody being very fixated on the negatives in a situation. But in general, this is just um, feeling feeling down, feeling sad, feeling like you've lost out on something. The Ace of Pentacles, all aces relate to new beginnings. The Ace of Pentacles in particular um, tends to represent like new beginnings in the realm of work or home life or even finances in some instances it can represent like a money offer coming your way or a new job opportunity or something like that obviously you know in this context we're talking about a relationship um so as far as relationships are concerned the ace of pentacles would signify like to me um the start of something fairly committed or 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 a grounded relationship okay do you know what i'm saying um the emperor right here in the center of this spread this also relates to stability this represents um typically like the divine masculine energy the emperor is generally just seen as a very solid very grounded kind of individual the type of person who's very much on top of things and uh likes to be in control who likes to uh basically who who takes their responsibilities very seriously and just likes to be in charge and in control of things um the ace of wands again we have this connection to new beginnings some sort of new fresh energy coming into a situation the ace of wands specifically um really talks to me about creativity and new ideas and manifestation there is definitely a sense of enthusiasm and optimism with this card the three of wands is about potential and usually i see this as somebody looking out into the unknown looking to broaden their horizons um, it talks to me about potential and opportunity and like limitless possibilities okay it's a very broad very expansive um kind of energy that i that I get with the Three of Wands. The star is hope, hope for the future, optimism, also healing and restoration and renewal. And then lastly, the Eight of Swords. This is isolation. Um, this card typically just shows me like somebody feeling stuck or trapped somehow, feeling confined, feeling restricted. And then on the bottom of the deck over here, we've got the Five of Swords, which to me, this is really a card of like disappointment or defeat. Um, it can represent getting something that you want, but it doesn't really meet your expectations. It doesn't turn out to be as good as you thought it would be. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, you've, you've achieved some sort of victory, but it feels hollow. It feels unfulfilling. Okay, and then this oracle card, New Love, fairly self-explanatory. Um, we've got, again, this new, new sort of energy here. Um, something new, something new coming in, something new starting out. Um, the current energy between you guys. This is... Um, this it feels like well okay first of all um i do get the impression that there may be 
some distance between you and this person right now. You may not necessarily be in a state of separation, but it just seems to me like there's been some kind of conflict or some kind of problem within your relationship um, somewhat recently. I say that because we've got the Five of Cups and the Eight of Swords and the Five of Swords here. Um, you know, I, I, I really get the impression that there is some sadness. There is some sense of like loss or loneliness um, that is present within your connection right now. Um, I see the two of you wanting to move towards each other, but holding back. Um, one thing that's really, really standing out to me just looking at these cards is the fact that the Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Wands, it's like, it, it's like they are moving towards each other. Like this hand is, is offering the wand in the direction of the, this hand, and, and this hand is offering the pentacle in the direction of, of that one. And it's, it's like they are offering something to one another. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't want to go too much into like past energy in this relationship because, you know, this is obviously a general reading and every situation is going to be unique. Um, but I just get this feeling like the two of you, I feel like you and this person have had some sort of commitment in the past. Um, or maybe you technically still are in a committed relationship with this person, but it feels like in, in the past, the two of you tried to work together to build something, okay? Um, and you maybe made some significant progress together, but then something happened. Some kind of conflict arose, some sort of... Well, I, I feel like somebody in this equation was really holding back, maybe keeping secrets, or um, I don't really... I don't really see like a betrayal necessarily, but it feels like somebody was just maybe dealing with some kind of, I, I want to say like maybe some kind of personal issue with the Eight of Swords being here because swords in general are very much about like our thoughts, intellect, you know, the things that go on in our minds and the Eight can definitely signify like self-limiting thoughts or beliefs, like feeling held back by something that you think or believe. Um, do, do you know what I'm saying? So I, I definitely feel like whatever conflict happened between the two of you, it probably happened because some somebody, one of you, um, was really holding back from the other person, like not, like not really opening up to the other person, not really expressing themselves or... Um, being open and honest just about their thoughts and their feelings and stuff. And I feel like it might have made the other person um, feel kind of alienated or isolated from them. Do you, does that make sense? Um, yeah, okay. Looking at this Five of Swords, kind of building upon what I was just saying. Um, I, I definitely feel that there's a lot of... Um, there are a lot of mutual feelings between you and this person. There's a lot of loving energy that I feel coming through here with the Six of Cups. There's a lot of optimism, a lot of enthusiasm, a real strong desire, I feel, for the two of you um, to be close to one another. And I really get the impression that this is, like, like this is energy that has existed between you guys for some time. Um... And I feel that in the past, you know, you had this opportunity to come together and build something together. And, and that you both were quite excited about it. But because of this issue, because of this restraint, this feeling of having to hold back, this feeling of... Uh, being unable to really open up and be one's most authentic self that, that one of you was experiencing, it led to the relationship feeling like something was lacking or something was missing between you guys. Okay, do you follow me? Um, like, like and, and what I mean is like, one of you, like we've already talked about, one of you was holding back one of you was very stuck in your head about something and that caused the other person to feel isolated 
and to feel like oh, maybe this relationship isn't quite right for me after all. You know, because now that we're together or now that we're working towards something, it just doesn't feel quite the same or it feels like something is missing between us. It feels like there's this space between us or this emptiness here. Um, I hope this, I, I hope that this is making sense, but it's like, one person was really holding back and it caused the other person to feel very disappointed in the relationship or very unfulfilled by the relationship. Okay, do you know what I'm saying? Um, so that that that's like the gist of the sort of issue that I see having come up between the two of you. And I feel as a result of that, all of this distance has come between you. And regardless of whether you're technically still with this person or if you're technically still trying to work on things with this person or if you've separated, you know, whatever the case may be, I can feel the sense of loss and I can feel the sadness that's coming from both of you about things so far having just not really worked out. Um, and I feel like your person in particular is kind of... I, I don't know. I feel like your person is kind of blaming themselves in some way. Like, regardless of their role in this equation, I feel like they are... They feel some responsibility for the way that things have turned out. They feel... Like, there should be more that they should be doing, but they're not sure what exactly they should be doing. Okay? Um... <clears throat> I feel like, I feel that for the majority of you who chose this group, you are wanting a reconciliation or you are wanting to make things work with this person and your person is wanting the same thing. Like I feel for the most part, most of you guys are on the same page as your person of interest. You're wanting the same thing. Um, you're, you're wanting to be moving in the same directions. However there's a bit of a disconnect as far as like maybe the communication right now. Um, let me, okay. I want to grab a couple more cards here and see if I can't get a bit more information. Cause I feel like there's something here that I'm not quite getting. Um, three of swords. Okay. Four of pentacles. And the Five of Wands. Okay. Mm. Okay, this is this seems like kind of a tough situation. Um, the Three of Swords. This is heartache, grief. It can represent betrayal in some cases. The Four of Pentacles is about control. And it also can represent trying to hold on to something or an unwillingness to let something go. And then the Five of Wands. This is about conflict. This is people being at odds with one another. Opposition chaos you guys are both wanting for things to work out here but it feels like there are a lot of obstacles in the way it feels like there's a lot of uh, opposition to the two of you actually working things out and some of that opposition could possibly be coming from outside sources, uh, external factors. Um, but I feel a lot of it is probably coming from your emotions or their emotions. Does that make sense? Um, like you're both wanting to hold on to this, but at the same time, it's like you guys are struggling to work through the feelings that you guys have um, pertaining to like what has gone on in this relationship. And I mentioned that there may not necessarily have been like a betrayal or anything, although the Three of Swords can represent that. You know, take take this how it resonates with you. Apply it, you know, it, it, how it makes sense to you. Um, but <clears throat> I feel like, hold on. <clears throat> Two 
two of swords and nine of wands. Can I get, okay, queen of swords. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to pull a couple more cards because I felt like I wanted to get a little bit of advice for the two of you. Uh, moving forward. The Queen of Swords is a very no-nonsense kind of individual. This card is very much about communication and openness and honesty and insight. Um, she's not the type of person to beat around the bush about anything. The Two of Swords re represents indecision, uncertainty, um, somebody being very unsure about what choice they should make in a situation, or just feeling like they're really locked in a stalemate. Um, and then the Nine of Wands, the energy of this card is very tired. It's very exhausted. It shows up a lot in situations where somebody um, has maybe been working towards a particular goal, but it's taking a long time to get there. And there has been a lot of obstacles that have gotten in the way. And because of that, they might be starting to feel like giving up. They might be starting to feel like just letting go of this goal that they have. But what the Nine of Wands is really about is pushing through anyway. It's pushing through to the very end, despite feeling tired, despite any, you know, setbacks that have come up. It's it's about continuing to fight for what you want, um, despite all of that. These cards are showing me that you guys are wanting essentially the same thing. And you can work together to make amends and, and to heal and restore this relationship. There is a lot of potential, untapped potential between you and this person. Um, the possibilities for you guys are basically endless. You just have to be willing to fight for this, okay? And you have to be willing to compromise and work together in order to achieve this, this renewal, this new beginning, okay? Um, and I think that's what this oracle card is talking about. Uh, this is not necessarily about somebody new coming into your life or a new relationship starting. I think this is about a new beginning within this already established connection, okay? The Queen of Swords is just telling you that you guys have to be willing to talk to each other. Like, Every relationship is based on communication. If you don't have open communication, you don't really have anything. Um, so, you know, this this is just really, really emphasizing the importance of that. Like, nothing is going to be resolved if you guys can't communicate with each other openly and without judgment, you know, without, um, without things becoming very emotionally charged and stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think your best course of action, group one, is going to just simply be to express to this person what it is you're looking for here, what you want for the two of you moving forward and how you're feeling and what you're thinking about this whole situation. And I feel like for most of you, they will do the same. I feel like for most of you, they will mirror that energy, okay, um, and, and reciprocate. However, for some of you, I, I feel that your person does have a bit of an issue with being open like that. Um, so it may require some patience on your part um, as, as far as getting them to just be honest with you about what's going on with them. Um, and you know what? Before I wrap this up, actually, I want to grab a card from the Lover's Oracle deck here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Immediately, we have the healing card. Imagine yourself and your beloved surrounded by light. Feel your relationship being healed this very moment. Um, I feel that there is a lot of love between the two of you. And this person wants so badly for things to be fixed, to be healed. But it's like, they just don't know how to go about it. They don't know how to fix things. They don't know how to communicate what they need or what they want. And I think if possible, um, it could be very beneficial for the two of you to like spend some time just like meditating together, grounding yourselves together. Um, if it's not possible, you know, you can do that by yourself. You can, you can meditate and, and ground yourself and try to connect, you know, with their higher self as you're doing that. Um, so just so that like energetically, 
the two of you are working together on the same page. You know what I'm saying? Um, there is hope for this connection, but it may take time for things to really be restored. Okay. Um, just because it seems to me like somebody here has a lot of personal stuff that, that they may be working through that could be blocking this connection. Um, and group one, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. Try to keep your chin up. There is, like I said, there is hope for this relationship in the future. I do feel that you guys can fix things and you can reconcile. Um, but it will take time. It will take patience and it will take mutual effort. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm getting for you guys. As far as the current energy between you and your person. Um, this is just general, so take what applies to you and leave the rest behind. If this reading did not resonate with you, then it was not meant for you. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it, and I hope I see you next time. Bye! Moving on to group number two, those of you who chose the Tarot of Sexual Magic with the Clear Quartz. Let's find out about the current energy between you and your person of interest. Nine of Swords, right away. Judgment. You've got some intense energy coming out here right out of the gate. The Nine of Wands, the Star, Five of Pentacles, right in the center here, <clears throat> the Hermit, oh, that's a few too many cards, Seven of Pentacles, Ace of Cups, let me get one more here, Eight of Pentacles, and on the bottom of the deck, we have the Eight of Wands. Okay, so there's that. Let me grab an Oracle card for you guys before we jump into this. What is the current energy between group two and their person of interest? We have the union of hearts. A love connection defies explanation. Okay, I'll put that right there. Okay, so group number two, we have, first of all, we've got the Nine of Swords here. Um, this is kind of an interesting energy just right off the bat because this card is really about stress and anxiety, um, overthinking things, feeling very stuck in your head about something. Judgment usually represents some sort of rebirth or an awakening or some kind of very significant change happening in a person's life. The Nine of Wands is a very weary, very exhausted kind of energy. Um, it, it usually is about like fighting to overcome adversity or overcome obstacles in order to reach a particular goal. Um, you know, it maybe has been taking a very long time to reach that goal. A lot of setbacks maybe have arisen, but it's about pushing through despite those things. The star card here is about healing, renewal, restoration. It's also a very optimistic energy, hope for the future. It can relate to wish fulfillment as well. In the center of the spread here, we have the five of pentacles, which is about loss, abandonment, loneliness, instability. Um, the hermit, 
this is a very solitary energy. This card is usually about like somebody withdrawing from other people, wanting to keep to themselves, somebody being in a very introspective kind of state of mind. The Seven of Pentacles here. This is, this card usually talks to me about like long-term investments or future planning. Um, it's definitely a card of patience. It's definitely a card of slow movement. Um, the Ace of Cups is associated with new beginnings, especially in the realm of love and relationships. Um, it can also represent people opening up to one another about their feelings, express the, the expression of emotions between people. Um, the Eight of Pentacles, this is hard work, making the effort to achieve one's goals. This is like the blood, sweat, and tears card. Um, and then over here on the bottom of the deck is the Eight of Wands, which is very much about forward movement. It's about action. It's about messages coming through, um, news coming in. So we've got some interesting stuff here. Um... The first thing that I'm getting is that you and the person that you're thinking about, it, it seems to me like things have maybe been very off and on between the two of you. Um, like maybe there have been periods of time where uh, things were really moving forward, things were going really well between the two of you, but then things would just kind of come to a screeching halt and things would just reach a total standstill for a while. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, it's possible that this person has been sort of in and out with you. You know, there there maybe have been times where there hasn't been very much communication or very inconsistent communication between you guys. Um, and I feel that, you know, there's there's been a lot of instability here because of that. Um, and there's also been a lot of stress and a lot of uncertainty on your part because of that as well. Um... I'm seeing, based on what I'm seeing here, I feel that you and this person do have a significant connection to each other. I feel like this could actually be um, like a, a, a karmic, well, maybe not a karmic relationship, but this could be like a twin flame connection or a soulmate relationship of some kind. I'm more inclined to say twin flame just because this feels kind of tumultuous, you know, the, the up and down roller coaster sort of energy um, that I'm seeing here would imply that. But I feel like you do have a, a real connection to this person, and I feel like there is real um, love and affection between the two of you. I feel like you guys want each other. I feel like you guys... Let's see, how do I want to say this? You, okay, it, it seems to me like you, the person watching this video right now, are just craving some stability here. You're just craving some consistency. And sometimes they can give you some stability, but then it's like, it, it seems like it just falls apart again eventually. And I'm gonna, I wanna pull a couple more cards and see like what this person's issue is. <laughs> I mean, just to put it bluntly, because Okay, we've got the Page of Wands. Okay. Um, the Page of Wands is fire, it's passion, it's enthusiasm, but it's also immaturity and youthfulness and inexperience. Um, the Page of Wands is a figure who really values their freedom and they don't want to be tied down. It's a very non-committal sort of energy. So it seems to me like this person is really fighting between this desire to be free, this desire to be, you know, on their own, not tied down by anyone or anything. Um, and this, this deeper, like soul level desire to be near you, to be close to you. It's like they're fighting between those two wants that they have. Okay. Um, Internally, it seems to me like there's a lot that they've been thinking about. There's a lot that they've been going through. We have the Ten of Pentacles showing up here. Um, this card is abundance, prosperity, stability, security, um, happy relationships, happy home life, that sort of energy. 
It's like there's these two sides of them that are wanting very different things. We have the Hierophant here. The Hierophant is typically seen as like a husband or father figure. Again, this is earth energy. This is stability. Um, the Hierophant is also like a teacher or a mentor, and it can represent marriage as well or long-term, you know, long-term commitments. Um, this is, I'm sorry, sorry about like, some of these, I don't know, awkward pauses here, but I'm like, I'm trying to figure out how I want to explain what I'm seeing here. There's a lot of conflicting energy that seems to be coming from your person. Like I said, there's these real conflicting desires that they have about relationships, about what they want. Um, I feel that for a lot of you, this person is maybe a little bit immature or... It just feels like they have a lot of growing to do, okay? Like, like they, especially in terms of, like, their own understanding of themselves, it's like they have a lot to, to learn about themselves, and they have a lot of growth that they need to achieve. Um... I mean, honestly, this whole, the, the, the energy that I'm seeing here looks fairly typical of, you know, twin flame or divine counterpart um, connections, okay? Like that, that separation, that in and out phase, you know what I'm saying? Um, I want to pull some more cards because I feel like there's more to this that I'm not quite getting here. Uh... We have the fool. Yeah, this is inexperience. This is youthfulness. This is immaturity or childishness, even in some cases. Um, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Sorry. I'm seeing that. Okay. Your, your person's higher self and their ego. That's what's really at odds with one another here. Okay, this person, um, you know, spiritually and emotionally, they, they're not real advanced, <laughs> I guess that you could say. Um, it feels like this is a very physical person in the sense that they are very focused, very fixated on what's going on in the 3D, okay? Um, they are very much controlled by their ego, okay? Um... And so it's like their ego, that's that's the, the part of them that wants to be free. That's the part of them that just wants to do with whatever they want to do. They don't want to be tied down. Um, you know, we've got the Hierophant here with two women, like, trying to lay on him and stuff. And it's like, mm, you know, <laughs> the Hierophant is, is, is typically meant to be, like, a very solid, very grounded kind of figure. But in this instance, it's like... It's almost like he's 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 a king and he can he gets to have whatever he wants or he you know he wants to have his cake and eat it too you know he wants to have whatever he wants to have um does that make sense and I can feel that a lot of you who are watching are very very frustrated with your person and very frustrated with their behavior and just the fact that they can't seem to overcome those base desires and wants that they have okay um they are certainly being called to do a lot of inner work shadow work introspection um it's like your connection to each other is meant to be prompting them to do that stuff but so far they've been really resisting it okay do you follow me um i want to grab a card from the lovers oracle deck here and see if there's anything that they want to add to this um, before I say any more. Okay, okay, this is interesting. Criticizing one another will only lead to further unhappiness. Love and accept each other as you are, and your relationship will magically transform. So, usually this card is about, like, compromise, and it's about, like, learning to accept other people for who they are and what they are. In this case, however, um, I really get a sense of... What's the word I'm looking for here? I really get a sense of like, okay, it, it's talking to me about surrender in this case. Um, it's talking to me about you guys learning to step back and just say, okay, 
I'm not going to try to control this situation anymore. I'm not going to try to control this person or what they do. I'm going to give them space to do what they need to do to sort out their issues and get themselves together. And I'm not going to worry about like what they're doing in the meantime. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, going to fixate and obsess over, you know, when are they going to give me the attention that I need from them? When are they going to give me the validation and the love that I deserve from them? Do you know what I'm saying? And and this is not to be, this is not meant to be like a dig at you guys in, in any way. Um, it's just that when you're... It, when you're stuck in a situation like this, it's very easy to become really fixated on that person and, and really trapped in the relationship, consumed by, by the relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, it's easy to, to, to just be thinking about that person all the time and be worried all the time about like what's going to happen. When are they going to get it together? When are they going to take me seriously? You know, that kind of thing. Um, there will be progress in this relationship, with, in, in this connection, but it will take time. Okay, it will take time and it's going to take a lot of hard work and effort on their part, but also on yours because it's really important right now that you recognize that you have no control over this. You have no control over this connection or, or you know, how quickly or how slowly it moves forward um, or even the eventual outcome. You know what I'm saying? Um you have to just have faith that spirit is going to lead them where they need to be. Spirit is going to guide them on their journey, okay, to overcome the ego and, and the things that are holding them back, the, the, those shadow elements of themselves that are holding them back. Um, you know, this is, this is just general. So, um, the exact circumstances and, and issues that are holding back your people are going to be unique to each situation, right? But um, spirit is going to help them and, and guide them. And they are going to, they are going to learn. They're going to figure out their mistakes and they're going to grow from them and they're going to become better versions of themselves and wiser versions of themselves. But it will take time. And it will require patience on your part and surrender on your part. Like you, I mean, it kind of sucks, but like you have to just be able to release this connection or, or release this person and just say, go do what you need to do. You know? And I, I also want to mention really quickly, like, I feel that some of you are wanting to make plans with this person. I feel that some of you are wanting a specific future with this person. You're wanting to, to do specific things with this person in your life. Um, unfortunately, some of those things may not happen because of the timing, because of how long it's going to take for them to get it together. So it's very important that you release those expectations. I mean, all of your expectations, really. A union is possible, and a union will eventually happen, but it's not going to happen the way you might anticipate. It's not going to happen according to your expectations or your desired outcome, okay? You know what I'm saying? Um, we can't fix anybody else, you know? We are only human. We, you, you can't, you can't show this person the way. They have to figure it out on their own. Because that's like what this journey is all about, figuring things out for yourself, figuring out what what is for you, okay? Um, so group two, I, I realize that this is, you know, this is not an ideal situation. This is difficult. 
Um, but there is, I want to say there is hope for this connection in the future. However, I just, I have to say again that the future of this relationship may not be exactly what you are wanting or hoping for. Okay, and, and usually, you know, in the end, things work out better than we ever anticipated. It's just like, like, it's just a matter of accepting that, that, that you're not necessarily going to get exactly what you want the way that you want it. Um, I hope that makes sense. So again, I know that this wasn't really meant to be like an advice or guidance reading, but I just, I can't emphasize enough this message that's coming through here that you need to detach and you, it's just in your best interest to do whatever you need to do to, to not stress over this situation anymore. Okay. Um, cause it's just not, it's not going to do you any good. And it's not going to speed things up. It's not going to make things happen any faster. Um, it's just, this is going to pan out in, in, in its own timing. Okay. And you just kind of have to allow that to happen when it's supposed to happen, when you both are ready for it to happen. Um, so group two, I'm sorry I couldn't give you a more like optimistic message. Um, but that's what's coming through for you guys. That's the energy that I'm seeing between you and your person of interest. So I hope that this resonated with you. I hope it was interesting. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I hope I see you guys next time. Bye. Okay, and my group three people, those of you who chose the Wild Unknown Tarot with the Opalite, let's look at what the current energy is between you and your person of interest. We have the Emperor coming out right away. Six of Swords. Five of Pentacles. the energy between group three and their person. Jeez. All right. We've got seven of wands. Pentacles, Page of Swords, <clears throat> Eight of Swords, let me get one more. Wheel of Fortune, and on the bottom of the deck, we have the Two of Cups. Oh my god, I love that. Okay, um, let me grab an Oracle card for you guys before we get started. Whoa. got forgiveness. Nothing is gained by holding on to past disappointments. Okay. 
So, uh, group three, let's jump right into this. Um, first of all, we have the Emperor showing up here. The Emperor is really a very solid, very grounded kind of figure. The Emperor is typically the type of guy who is very much on top of things, who takes his responsibilities very seriously, he's very much in control, he's very um, stable and secure. Um, this card also relates to the divine masculine energy. The Emperor can definitely represent a husband or father type of figure, a provider, a caretaker, um, and even a teacher in some cases. The Six of Swords, this card is about reconciliation, conflict resolution, people coming together and working through problems and moving forward together. Um, this card can sometimes also relate to travel as well. The Five of Pentacles here, this is about like instability, insecurity. It can represent loss, loneliness, abandonment. The seven of wands this is um this to me is really a card of struggle it comes up a lot in situations where somebody is really fighting to maintain their position somehow or struggling to overcome some sort of obstacle or adversity um, when somebody is maybe just feeling very defensive feeling very cautious very guarded uh the four of cups here this is disappointment, disillusionment. Um, it can represent, well, it's it's a very passive sort of energy. Um, so in some cases, you know, it can represent like things moving very slowly. It can represent emotional unavailability, um, that sort of thing. The king of pentacles or the father of pentacles, this is um, abundance and prosperity. And a little bit similar to the emperor card, I see this particular king as a husband, a father figure, a provider, a nurturer, that sort of thing. Um, and also when we're talking about relationships, pentacles energy in general really talk to me about commitment and dedication, okay? So the father of pentacles is a very devoted kind of figure. Um, the daughter of swords, to me, this card relates a lot to, like, long-distance forms of communication, okay? This card can represent, like, messages coming through. Um, the Eight of Swords, isolation, withdrawal, somebody feeling stuck or trapped. Um, particularly being stuck or trapped because of one's own thoughts or beliefs, okay? Um, and then... The Wheel of Fortune, this is a card of movement, change, cycles, endings, and new beginnings. This card also relates a lot to divine timing and divine guidance. And then finally, we have the Two of Cups here. This is unity and partnerships and unconditional love. I see this as very strong emotional bonds between people. And this can also certainly um, indicate like a marriage or a long-term partnership of some kind. So, um... With all of that said, first of all, you know, with the Two of Cups being here on the bottom of the deck, this is like the overarching energy of the whole spread. And with it being here, I really feel that there is a lot of love between you and the person you're thinking about. I feel that you and this person make a good team. You are, you, you work well together and you care about each other a lot. Um, I also get the impression with the Six of Swords and the Daughter of Swords both being here that this may be a long distance relationship or a long distance connection. Um, for some of you, I feel that you uh, may actually be in a relationship with this person, like a committed relationship. For others of you, this could be a situation where you're just, you, you're, you know, you're still talking, still getting to know each other or something like that. Um, but whatever the case, I really get the sense that there's a lot of like physical distance between the two of you for some reason. <clears throat> you may live in different cities, you may live on opposite sides, sides of the world even, you know. Um, but I feel that you guys have a strong connection. And I feel like you guys are wanting more for for the two of you. Like, I, I think for most of you who chose this group, it just really seems to me like you guys are wanting 
more of a commitment or or more dedication to this relationship or you want to be able to just be together you want to be able to just spend time with each other face to face and do things together and actually build a solid tangible life together like you are wanting the uh, one another to be a more physical presence in your lives okay does this make sense um that's really the vibe that I get here. Um, and not all of you are necessarily in long distance relationships that chose this group. Um, but whatever the case is, I just feel like there may be circumstances present um, that are preventing you guys from being able to build the relationship that you really want to have together. Okay, do you follow me? Um, it seems to me like the person you're thinking of really does take you seriously. They really are taking this relationship seriously as well. Um, but it kind of looks like there's been a lot of obstacles that have gotten in the way of the two of you actually being able to make the progress that you want to be making. Um, you know, specifically for those of you who are in a long distance thing, it seems like you know, maybe you guys make plans to meet, but then something happens and you have to cancel or you have to postpone. Um, you know, there could be financial obstacles to that. There could be, I feel like, I mean, this is a, a little bit more specific. This isn't going to be applicable to all of you, but I feel for some, um, there may even be some insecurity that's kind of contributing to this as well. Uh, with the Eight of Swords being here, I feel like for some, either you or your person have some doubts about, not I, not about the relationship, not necessarily about the other person, but I feel like somebody here may have some insecurities about themselves that are causing them to feel somewhat hesitant about taking things further. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, for example, if this is long distance, somebody might be feeling like, you know, when you meet in person, the other person might not like them as much. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, or, or it might not be the same face to face as it is on the phone or online or whatever. Um, just insecurity, doubts about themselves. And, um... I feel that there has been a lot of disappointment in this relationship. Again, not necessarily with each other, because I feel like you and your person have built a fairly strong bond to each other. And I feel like you guys do care about each other a lot. Um, and there is a lot of love here. But the, the disappointments, kind of like we've already touched on, I feel like these disappointments have been in, you know, missed opportunities or having to cancel meetings or, you know financial setbacks, things of, along those lines, you know? Um, and I think for a lot of you, both you and your person may be feeling like, you know, is this ever going to go anywhere? Is this ever going to get off the ground? Are we ever going to actually be able to be together or, you know, build the lives that the, the life that we want to have together? Okay. Um, I, I see, I mean, that's like, like, those are all questions that I'm hearing in my mind right now um, that you guys may be asking yourselves or your person might be asking themselves. Um, it's just, it just seems like you guys have felt as though you've had to really fight for this relationship. Like there have been, there has been some kind of setback almost every step of the way. Okay. But even though you may be feeling discouraged, I feel that there is a lot of hope for this relationship. I feel like if you guys can make it through this period where things don't seem to be working out and, you, you know, you, you, you're kind of bound by circumstances or external factors, if you guys can make it through this, and hold on to each other and, you know, continue building your emotional connection and your mental connection to each other. Eventually, the path is going to open up for you guys, okay? The Wheel of Fortune is going to turn in your favor. Um, it seems to me like 
these obstacles uh, have almost been serving as tests for the two of you and also been serving as like, I want to say opportunities for you guys to strengthen your bonds, okay? And that might sound weird. That might sound really weird. But it's like you're you're being given these chances to really grow together and really develop your love for each other so that when you guys can finally come together and and make things work out the way that you want your chances of success will be like exponential you know what i'm saying like it, it's going to be almost guaranteed that this relationship will be a, a success because you've already been through so much together you've already endured so much together and your love and your you know your bond has won out every time okay does this make sense um i want to grab a card from the lovers oracle deck <clears throat> Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Interesting. We have forgiveness. Stop focusing your energy on past events for life is too precious to waste. You create your reality by what you think, dream, and imagine. The Whispers of Love Oracle card that came out for you is also forgiveness. Nothing is gained by holding on to past disappointments. So there's something significant here, obviously, pertaining to forgiveness. Um, you know, of course, this is a general reading. So every situation, every relationship here that's that's being re represented is going to be unique. It's going to be somewhat different. Um, but for many of you, there is something here pertaining to letting go of the past, letting go of something from the past and moving forward. Um, and I think this is kind of tying in with that that idea that like you guys have been growing a lot together on this journey. Okay, I feel like for some of you, maybe early on in your relationship with this person, there were some bumps in the road. There were some conflicts actually between the two of you. Um, and, you know, there may have been arguments, there may have been fights even, but I feel like you guys learned from those mistakes and you have, have learned from them to the extent that they're not going to be made again in the future. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there there was some trial and error as you guys were getting to know each other. Okay? <laughs> and these cards are really saying, like, if there's anything that happened early on in your relationship that, that bothered you, maybe still bothers you, think about why that is. Okay? Um, I, I feel like you really can trust this person. I feel like... Hmm, how do I want to say this? Mistakes that were made early on when you guys were still getting to know each other, maybe even before you guys really decided that you wanted to be together, those mistakes that were made then are not going to be repeated because your person has learned. And your person, like, like you guys have gotten to the point now where this is serious and, and they are dedicated to this. Okay, so your person is not going to do anything to jeopardize this relationship or, or to jeopardize your trust in them. They're not going to want to do anything like that. Okay. So if there is anything that happened in the past that is still bothering you or that still gives you some doubt or a sense of insecurity, you may want to ask yourself why that is, you know, really dig deep and evaluate, like, why does that thing that happened then make me feel the way that it does now? You know, what's, what's, where's the disconnect here? Like, what is, what do I need in order to feel secure enough to let this go and, and let it stay in the past? Okay, does that make sense? And if you need to talk to your person about it, don't be afraid to do that because I feel like I feel like for the majority of you, you have a connection such that if you want to talk about something or if you feel like you need to talk about something that's kind of difficult, 
you can do so in a way that's not going to lead to a fight or an argument or disagreement. You can talk to each other about difficult things in very rational, you know, understanding, compassionate ways. Okay? Or at the very least, I feel like your person is going to be understanding or strive to be understanding about, you know, what it is you're feeling. Um, so... I, I really think that the future is looking bright for the two of you. Even though we have some not-so-great cards that came out here. I mean, yeah, this is, this is something that is worth holding on to. With the Four of Pentacles here, this is about holding on to something. Not wanting to let something go. And the Magician. You guys have the potential to create whatever you guys want. Um... You have the power, the resources to manifest your dreams, to make your dreams a reality. There is limitless potential in this relationship. There is limitless opportunity for growth and development and stability. And eventually there will be no more disappointments. There will be no more setbacks. Eventually the path is going to clear for you guys to move forward and finally set the plans in motion that you have made together. All right, so um, group three, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I really hope that this resonated with you and I really hope that this was interesting, helpful. Um, this is just general, so, you know, take what applies to you, take what resonates with you, and leave the rest behind. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it, and I hope I see you guys next time. Bye!